Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome back to another video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be creating a couple shaker cards using smaller stamp sets from Newton's Nook. Small stamp sets, these itty bitty, really inexpensive stamp sets, can sometimes be a little bit intimidating because they're so small and a card is so big in comparison. Today I'm going to break that down for you and give you some ideas on what to do with some really small stamp sets. And I'm going to throw in some stenciling and ink blending in there as well because that's one of my kind of go-to ways to use these smaller stamp sets. So let's get going. Here's my little pile of a brand new product from Newton's Nook. Big shout out to Newton's Nook for sending me these to use. Thanks so much. We've got two little stamp sets. I'll show you those up close in a minute. And then I have two stencils. Uh, one has seashells and starfish and the other has tropical fish. So these two, two smaller stamp sets, one's called Flip Flop Life and the other is called Vitamin C. I'm going to use these on two separate cards today. And I sketched out some card ideas. Um, both have shaker card elements and one has kind of flip flops inside the shaker elements. But if you've seen the thumbnails for this video, you know that that idea went awry and it didn't happen, but I'll, I'll include the footage of me figuring it all out in this video so you can kind of go along with me. So the first thing I did was I stamped the flip-flops. I stamped three sets of them in some blackout ink from Ink on 3, and this ink works well with Copic markers. So I'm going to pick out some Copic colors that are based on this iced sherbet pack of sequins from Little Things from Lucy's Cards. So these are the colors I picked out. Initially, I was going to be using that pack of sequins for the flip-flop card. And so I wanted to use colors on the flip-flops that would go well with the sequins. So I'm starting out with Y13, that nice yellow color. The darker rose color is R85. And I just filled in some polka dots and also some of the flip-flop straps. And then I used C2, which is an, a cool gray shade. And then I came in with a nice icy blue shade, which is BG11. And I just filled in some of those polka dots. So to finish off these flip flops, I'm gonna add the lighter pink shade. And that color is RV32. And I filled in the background of the darker pink polka dot flip flops. And then I'm gonna go back to that blue color and just fill in the straps on that last set of flip flops. So then I took the coordinating dies for this little flip-flop set and I lined them up on my colored images and cut them all out to run it through three times to get all of these cut out. So now I'm going to use the We Are Memory Keepers Fuse Tool and what you do is you take like a page protector and you can run the fuse tool along the edge of this metal ruler and it has like a rolling tip on the end and it puts a dash line, almost like a stitch line. It melts the plastic and fuses the two sheets of plastic together. So you can create your own pockets, which is kind of a fun idea. So I've done three sides for this little shaker area and I have my own little pocket. I'm going to go ahead and put that sequence mix inside. And like I said earlier, my initial idea for this card was to have these flip-flops kind of shaking around inside with all of these sequins. So I ended up putting all of them inside and then closed it up. And I just ran that fuse tool along the fourth side and that closes up the pocket. And the problem with this is that there isn't much room for everything to move around and the flip-flops were clumping all together in one area. And I wasn't able to get those to separate. I thought maybe if I shook it around a lot, maybe it would start to separate all of those flip-flops. So I was giving it a really good shake trying to get those to separate. And while I'm editing this, I just want to reach back in time and just, Christina, stop trying to fix it. It's not going to work. <laughs> so um, at this point, I decided to move on and I would go back to that and figure it out later. So I took some sea glass cardstock from Simon and I stamped the Life's Better in Flip Flop Sentiment in Versamark ink, coated that with some white embossing powder, and then heat set that with my heat tool until it was smooth and melted. I then took one of the circle dies from Simon's Stamps Nested Circle Die Set and I placed that over the top and held that in place with some micro pore tape and ran that through my Big Shot machine. So at this point I decided I'm going to take these flip flops out 
and I'll save the sequins, um, possibly still use it on the same card, but I'm going to take the flip-flops out and modify my card design. So I'm going to close this back up since I'm going to keep those sequins all together and I don't want to lose them. So I'm going to run my fuse tool along that fourth edge just to close it up. And I really do love this sequin set. I think it's really beautiful. It's kind of like a nice pastel mix. So now I'm going to work on the other shaker card and I'm going to take another circle die from that same nested circle set and I cut it out and these circles are kind of stuck together from going through, the, through my die cutting machine. So I kept them together and then used my fuse tool and went around the circle in small segments, kind of turned my cardstock. By the way, I'm just using a heavy piece of cardstock underneath this. Um, we Are Memory Keepers actually sells, I think it's a glass mat that you can use with the fuse tool, but uh, I didn't want to go to that expense, so I just use a thick piece of cardstock. So now I'm going to use this mix from uh, Lucy's uh, cards, little things from Lucy's cards, and this is the Let's Be Mermaids set of sequins. I think it's so pretty. There's some really unusual bits in here, ones that kind of have scales on them. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I filled that up with all the sequins and then closed up that last little segment of the circle using my fuse tool. And this locks in all of those sequins and makes sure that nothing's going to fall out. In hindsight, I think I would have actually done this circle shaker area in a slightly larger circle so that you could see more of the sequins on the final card. But not a huge deal, this worked out just fine. Really love how all of those colors mix in that circle sequence area. So now I'm going to take some vellum cardstock and I'm working on the greeting for the other card. So I'm prepping the vellum with an anti-static powder tool. I stamped the vitamin C stamp in Versamark ink and then coated it with white embossing powder just like I did on that light blue piece of cardstock for the other card. So I'm going to wait till that's smooth and melted and then I'll trim it down so it's a nice drip. And when I put it over the top of the sequins, it still lets the sequins show underneath. Um, but you, you still have that sentiment. So I'm going to take my Easy Clean Matte from Tonic. And it's still stained with alcohol ink. And I'm going to take some white cardstock. This is some Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock. This is the 80 pound version. And I've just taped it down to my work surface as well as taping down this first stencil. I'm going to use Tumbled Glass Distress Ink and a mini round blending tool to bring in some of that blue on the bottom of this cardstock. So the, the first step of all of this blending is I'm going to bring in um, the blue over the stencil. And then I'll bring in some antique linen and kind of blend those together a little bit. They get a little bit of a green color in between since this is yellow and blue. Then I'll remove the stencil and then go back over those same areas in the same ink colors. And that's going to uh, just fill in some of those, get those gaps and make it feel a little bit more cohesive and it really emphasizes the change and shift of color from the blue to the yellow. I'm going to make sure I have that nice and blended right there in the center. So I'm going to move on to, um, well actually, this is when I realized that color of sequins was not going to work. So I will save that for another card and I'll come back to the sequin area, sequence area in a minute. I've moved on to the other card and the first color I'm using is Mermaid Lagoon. This is the stencil with the fish so I thought it would be kind of fun to do kind of underwater colors. So um, I'm now using Peacock Feathers. It's kind of a nice uh, teal blue shade and then I'll blend that up to tumbled glass and just like I did on the previous card design I'm going to remove the stencil and then go over those same areas with those colors to fill in some of those gaps. So I'm moving back to Peacock Feathers. I'm going to blend that all the way across to the middle. And then I'm going to take Mermaid Lagoon and bring that up from the bottom area of this background. So now I'm going to move on and uh, create the card bases for both of these cards. And they're both going to be the same, just out of some white cardstock. This is Nina Classic Crest Solar White, except this is the 110 pound version. Um, I think eventually I'll probably just switch to only using the 110 pound cardstock. But for now, I have lots of the 80 pounds. So that's what I'm using for backgrounds and stamping and things like that. But for card bases, I'm definitely using the 110 pound. I trimmed both backgrounds down just to take a little bit off each edge so that you couldn't see that really dark edge from the blending. 
And then I put some adhesive on the back of this circle shaker piece. This is some adhesive from Ranger. This is like strips of adhesive and it's clear adhesive and I haven't used too much of it and I thought I'd give it a try and it worked really well for this. I just put the clear adhesive on the um, back of that circle sequence area and then pressed it down onto my background. Now I'm going to put the vellum piece right over the top and I'm going to fold it down over the sides and then adhere it to the back side of the background. And that's going to make it so that that vellum piece is sort of just hovering over the top of the design and you can't see any adhesive underneath the vellum. So I'll go ahead and press this down to the back side of the card. I'm just making sure everything's lined up before I do that. And this is this card is almost completely finished. I'm just going to adhere it to my card front. So I put some foam adhesive down and then put that down onto the front of the card. Okay, so going back to the other card with the sequence that didn't work out, I decided to take the background and put it inside the, the shaker area. So this card is going to be all one big shaker. So I'm going to run my fuse tool around the outside edge of the background. I just have the background inside the page protector, like it's inside the pocket, and I put up some adhesive on the back of it so that it would stay in place. And I closed up the three sides and then filled the inside with this assorted sequin pack of Moonstone sequins from Simon Says Stamp. Then closed up the sequins area, the shaker area, by using my fuse tool along that top edge. And then I used my scissors and trimmed this out so that it was just the right size. So this, I was actually really lucky this entire shaker area turned out to be the perfect size for a card. In the future I think I would have cut down that background piece even a little bit more so that it wouldn't have been such a tight fit to the edge of the card. So I put some adhesive on the back of that and then pressed it down onto the front of the card and you can see how well that still shakes around and the sequins are moving and I think it looks really pretty almost like glittering sand. Put some foam adhesive behind my greeting and I'm going to put that right in the center of this card and press that down really well. The last thing to do is add my flip flops. I'll put some foam adhesive behind those and then press it down onto the front of the card. So these really small stamps, my tips for you would be use stencils or background stamps to fill the blank areas of the cards. Notice how the, the um, ink blended areas kind of fill the entire card, but the actual stamped pieces of the designs are quite small. So try to like match really large design elements like blending or backgrounds or stencils with the smaller elements of a small stamp set. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I'm so glad you stopped by. I hope you enjoyed the two card ideas. I've got two more cards on screen for you to check out. These are videos I've done in the past. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell and hit the like button. Don't forget to share the video and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next card video.